Hey folks, Eric, here's the whatever guy, because it really is whatever me. And do you folks want to know about the Air Force offering these waivers, these marijuana waivers for recruitment? You guys stick around, man, and I'll talk to you guys about that. As you guys know, man, my name is Eric. I am the whatever guy, and I usually shoot videos a couple days a week, basically keeping you guys updated in the world of Delta 8, Delta 9, Delta 10, hip cannabis, just what's going on around. And today, man, we're going to go on a little bit of a personal journey, uh, talking about this article over at uh, Marijuana Moment. As you guys know, uh, in the recent years, uh, the military has actually relaxed the marijuana uh, restrictions, restrictions and stuff that they have, especially for those guys that are, uh, that are initially going into the army, uh, in the military and stuff like that. Today's article is on the Air Force, but as you guys may or may not know, I spent a number of years in the military um, and I use these products continually through the whole time I was in the military. Uh, let me take that back. Not the whole time I was in the military, probably the first five years I was in the military, I didn't use them. Uh, but after I got shot the first time, um, you know, they were trying to stick me on opioids and stuff like that. So I spent the next, you know, 15 years of my military career uh, hiding my marijuana use. And I, I was a continual marijuana user through that whole time. And having said that, the 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 battle and the and the in and the in the way that the passage and the way that you had to go through uh that whole 15 years of the military was was always you know seeming like there was always something behind your back you know always wondering when that next piss test was going to come and stuff like that and now we fall forward to you know 20 20 30 years later and we're in a position where we're actually uh, allowing these people that have used marijuana to come into the military. And what's happening is, is these guys in the military, people aren't as tough as they used to be. They're, they, people aren't going into the military. Everybody wants to sit behind a computer. Everybody wants to build an e-commerce store. Everybody wants to be on the internet, but nobody wants to join the military like they did, you know, in my day and, and, and previous to that, you know, in, in previous generations to that. People, when I was going in, were just getting to the point where they weren't starting to join the army for, you know, for patriot patriotism. They were joining the army because they wanted college money. And then they parents would bitch and moan and complain when they got shipped overseas to go fight a war somewhere, which made no sense to me whatsoever. But having said that, as we move forward, we're finding out that these military uh, branches are having a hard time getting enlistees to come into the military. And so I'm going to flip over to an article over here at Marijuana Moment. Uh, and this is an article about the Air Force, but this basically covers everybody in the military uh, or, or, or covers all the branches of the military. This one's about the uh, Air Force and the Space Force. It says the Air Force granted triple the triple the number of marijuana waivers it expected in first year of recruitment policy change. Okay, so they apparently they changed the policy. Uh, I think they'll talk about it in this in this article. They may have changed it in a year, but apparently they have went triple the number of waivers that they they intended to give out. The Air Force is granting more than three times as many enlistment waivers to recruits who test positive for marijuana than it anticipated when it first launched the effort to give people who have consumed cannabis another shot to join the service. The military branch announced a policy change last year authorizing it to grant waivers to recruits who test positive for THC metabolites. And for those of you that don't know, the drug test or the P-test really does not test for THC. What it tests for is the metabolites that are created when THC binds to your CB1 and CB2 receptors. So you could literally uh, have products out there that tie to your CB1 and CB2 receptors that would make, that would create the, the, the metabolites that would make you come up hot on this piss test. Just understand that, that the only way that you're going to find out if you're, you're hot for THC is not from a piss test because they're only testing for the metabolites. They're not testing for uh, the actual THC inside your system uh, during their initial drug screen and giving them 90 days before they retest. Um, Previously, Air Force candidates who tested positive would be automatically barred from joining. Okay, so now what's going on is, is if you come up to uh, to be a recruit for the Air Force, uh, and I believe it's the same way for the Army and the Navy, uh, if you come up there and you test positive for marijuana, what they're doing is, is is not barring you and telling you you can never join the military because that's what was happening in my day. Like in my day, if I had to win up the MEPS and showed up hot on a piss test, um, they would have never allowed me to join the military. My military career would have been over before it even started. However, now we've moved forward, you know, 30 something years later, and we're looking at a, in a, in a, in a position where uh, these guys can show up hot on a piss test uh, and then, you know, they will not ban them, but give them another retest in, say, 90 days. And, and then that would automatically could give them a, uh, a reason to go ahead and be enlisted into the Air Force. In the first year since the waivers became available, the branch said it issued 165 uh, 165 waivers. That's more than triple the 50 waivers it predicted it would grant annually. The, the policy covers both the Air Force and the Space Force. Within the first three months of September, from September 30th to December 31st of last year, it had already granted the second chance to 43 applicants. The Air Force missed its recruitment goal for the first time since 1999, and Jennifer Christopher Arm Amrahein, the, the branch's recruitment receivers commander, said last month that the situation could have been much worse if they hadn't instituted the marijuana waiver policy. Let's make no mistake. 
drug usage drug usage has no has absolutely no place in the air force or space forces but allowing a second test in the recruitment in the recruiting process is the right thing to do for fiscal year 23 the policy change allowed us to bring in approximately 165 additional high quality airmen that number is expected to rise as more as more states adopt more leniency toward cannabis and tec derivative air force recruiting spokesman chrissy cutta kutita told military.com not all recruits are eligible for waivers only those who score high enough on their qualification tests don't have convictions on their records and otherwise meet enlistment standards qualify under the pilot program, which lasts until September 2024. At that point, the Air Force will decide whether to make the policy permanent. If they do, it would align them with the other divisions of the military that have similarly revised cannabis policies like the Army, Navy, and Marine Corps. For the Air Force in particular, this waiver program presents represents a notable development as the branch instituted a policy in 2019, barring service members from using even non-intoxicating CBD, even if it is derived from hemp and is therefore federally legal under the 2018 Farm Bill. A Massachusetts base of Air Force released a Massachusetts based base of the Air Force released a notice in 2021 stating that service members can't even bring hemp infused products like shampoos, lotions, and hemp balms to the base, even if it's for your pet. Officials with the division also said in 2018 that it wants member that it wants members to be extra careful around Grandma Miracle sticky buns that might contain marijuana. Over the past several years, particularly since hemp was legalized, multiple military branches have notified their rank and file about their specific rules in cannabis around cannabis. All right, guys. So as we move forward, uh, this is a, this is a groundbreaking uh, move. I wish they had done this, you know, way back when I was in the military because it would have made it a lot easier for me to travel the last 15 years of my military career. But having said that, this is a really good move, especially for the military. The only way that they're going to be able to get the numbers that they want, even, even have a chance to get the numbers that they want in the military is by doing this because there's, there's just so much of these products out on the market right now that you could literally uh, you know, and, and I told you, like I told you a while ago, that that, that TEC, that, T, that test only tests with metabolites. It doesn't test for the TEC. So what's happening a lot of times is when you guys are getting full spectrum CBD and stuff like that, that is also tying to your CB1 and CB2 receptors. It will create those metabolites and you could find yourself in a position in the military where you pee in a, in a, in a cup and those metabolites are present and you never even touch TEC. Hopefully, as we move further down the road, they will get to a position where they can actually uh, you know, justify whether it's CBD or TEC, you know, as we move forward with the testing right now, I think that, you know, the, the P test is, is out there so far uh, that it would be not cost effective for them to just go ahead and cut it off and, you know, and change the whole system all the way around. But I would imagine that that's what they're driving towards. Uh, most of these employers out here now that are testing for uh, that are, you know, testing their employees in the workplace. Uh, what's happening now is a lot of times when those uh, when those labs get that test and that metabolite is showed up in there, they're having to retest that to make sure uh, that it is THC that you were that you were hot on and not just CBD. Uh, that's what a lot of the employers are doing out there. We hope that the military will get to that point, uh, but it's not there right now. But the cool thing is, is for those of you out there that have used marijuana in the past, they are offering these waivers for the, for the military. So if you guys want to join the military, it's a really really uh, you know something that I recommend that most every American should have to do at least do a year in service. But, but my opinion of it is, is that if you guys are lost and can't figure out what you want to do in life, uh, a little two or three year stint in the military is not going to hurt you. And it will certainly give you the discipline that you need to drive forward in your life. All right, folks, this is whatever got signed off. Hope you're having a great week. I apologize for being such a short video and leaving a little bit jawed up this morning. Uh, but I, uh, I'll talk to you guys later, man. Love you. See you.